From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The Urology Hospital in Pretoria in March celebrated 3,500 procedures done with its Da Vinci robot after having been the first hospital to acquire this type of surgical robot in South Africa in 2013. Malone Arnoldi visited the hospital. The Urology Hospital recently acquired the latest Gen 4X model in the Da Vinci robot range, replacing the Gen 3 predecessor. Urologists and surgeons such as Dr. Lance Kutsia uses the robot to assist with prostatectomies and other types of surgeries and has become a standard of care for patients undergoing prostate cancer surgery. The 900kg 4th generation Da Vinci robot provides improved magnification and greater precision during procedures. It comprises four arms that are able to move independently. Kutsia tells us more about the benefits for surgeons using the robots. It's much more precise and especially with the uh, cancer surgery, prostate cancer surgery, where we're trying to preserve nerves that are like little spider webs and urinary sphincters and so on that uh, contribute to the patient's quality of life after the uh, surgery. This has made it a lot easier because the vision is better, the instrument is much uh, finer, we can we can peel the skin off a grape with this uh, machine. Um, you know, that's how delicate and, and uh, precise it is. So uh, that, that's made it a lot easier to preserve normal structures when we're doing uh, cancer surgery. And also with the kidney surgery, uh, working in amongst big blood vessels and, and so on, where you, uh, your vision is so much better and uh, you know, we're able to remove tumors out of kidneys now. Um, and that's almost become the standard of care rather than just taking the whole kidney out like we used to in the past. The procedures done robotically at the urology hospital include cancerous prostate removals, cancerous kidney removals, reconstructive kidney surgery and pelvic organ prolapse treatment surgery. Because the robots allow for ease of work in smaller areas and are much less intrusive to patients, it allows for a shorter recovery time and reduces levels of post-operative side effects compared with conventional open surgery. Could Sia share some of the benefits to the patient? Well, one of the big benefits is that the recovery is so much quicker. They don't have big wounds or so on, but uh, the long-term benefits are that we can preserve a lot of their functions. For example, with uh, prostate cancer surgery, we, can, we have a high incidence of preservation of urine control, continence, and also potency control, in, uh, especially in the younger men. More than 12 million procedures have been done globally using the Da Vinci robots, with more than 70 countries currently using them. There are two other Da Vinci robots operating at hospitals in Gauteng, two in Port Elizabeth and four in Cape Town. To operate the robot requires extensive training. Kutsia unpacks the rigorous training process and where it happens. The training is quite intricate. We uh, in South Africa, the training is very intense and more intense than in a lot of the other countries because we uh, we couldn't afford to have bad outcomes. So uh, we uh, almost I hesitate to say, but overtrained our robotic surgeons. Uh, so the training involves you do online courses initially, you have in service training on the machine, then you work on a simulator, and there are about 60 different exercises that you go through to learn to get rid of your finger trouble and, and so on. And these exercises are very uh, well worked out to address certain movements, stitching, and so on. Um, of the 60 exercises, we do about 20 before we then, uh, and in those 20 exercises, you've got to achieve over 90% on three different occasions. Then only do you go overseas uh, to one of the uh, training centers, usually uh, situated in Belgium, in Orsi, or in Istanbul, in, in Turkey and you spend two or three days there doing live well, surgery on, on pigs um, and then you get certified uh, over there then you come back here and then you work with a proctor looking over your shoulder and the proctor will uh, what we do when we train uh, new guys is we uh, we literally uh, we do what we call a mirror technique where we will do one side, they'll do the other side until we're happy that they are 
uh, safe enough to be let loose on the, on the public. The robots are able to detect potential faults or errors on its own and warn the operator before the machine starts operating or even during operations without causing harm to the patient. Kutsia hopes that more surgeons will embrace this non-invasive technology. He tells us whether the urology hospital in Pretoria plans on acquiring more machines. This has become a big part of what we do and as we're training more and more of the young urologists coming through, the pressure on the one machine is, is becoming more and more intense. So there's a very realistic chance that we may need to get a second one at some stage in the future. That's Kuma Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.